Hi, this is Anne with Graphic Design How To, and today I'm going to show you how compound paths work and what they are. All right, let's get started. I think the best way to explain what happens when you create a compound path is that you're taking several paths, like these three ellipses, and forcing Illustrator to see them as one path. And this is different from a group. You can also group these, but let's take a look in our layers palette to see what the difference is. So right now, if we do this little drop down carrot, you can see that each of these is on a separate layer. They are not a compound path. And we can see that right up here. They are grouped together. And there's also a layer up here that holds those three shapes. So we can move them around and they stay together. And that's what grouping does. But when you make a compound path, it forces Illustrator to see them as one shape. So if we come up here to Object, Compound Path, Make, you can see here in the layers palette, let me, uh, let me put a black fill on these. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard to give me a white fill and a black stroke. Then I'll hit Shift X to swap the fill and the stroke. Now in our layers, we can see that the compound path is just one layer. So all three pieces are on the same layer. A good example of a use for a compound path is a clipping mask. A clipping mask can only be one shape. I'm going to paste in a photo so you can see what I mean. So we've got a photo here. I'm going to resize it a little bit. I'm going to move it on top of those three shapes. Now I'm going to send it to the back with shift command left bracket or shift control left bracket on a PC. I'm going to go ahead and release this mask. So we'll come up here to object compound path and release. So this will put it back into three separate layers for the ellipses. We got this one, this one, and this one. Now I want this image back here to be masked into these three shapes as a clipping mask. So I've got my three ellipses and then my photo underneath. So I've selected all three of them. I'll hold shift and also select the background because a clipping mask always has to be on top. And right now we're wanting these three shapes to be a clipping mask. But the thing is, Illustrator can only have one shape as a clipping mask. So when we try to do this and go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, it randomly chooses one of those three shapes to be the mask because it cannot have three shapes as a mask. I'm going to undo with Command Z or Control Z. And now um, I'll deselect that background. I'm going to make a compound path of these three shapes. So I'll hit Command 8 or Control 8 on a PC. So now you can see there one layer up here. Now I'll hold Shift and select the background and I'll make a clipping mask this time. I'll hit Command 7 or Control 7 on a PC. And as you can see, because these three shapes are seen as one shape, it can be used as a clipping mask. So as I said, Illustrator sees this as one shape. I'm going to get on my group selection tool right under here and I'm going to click off and then click on the very edge of one shape. And that's how you can select one piece of a compound path, even though it's one layer. Now, if I decide to change the color of this, watch what happens. Even though I only have one shape selected, if I choose green, it's going to change all of them because it sees them as one shape. You can't color pieces of your compound path differently. They have to all be one color. Another thing that compound paths are good for is spreading an effect across all three because it sees it as one shape. So I'm going to click on this and just hold shift and option or shift and alt to make a copy. And we don't really need this white outline. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then this one, I'm going to leave as a compound path. And this one, I'm going to release the compound path. So we'll come up here to object compound path release. And now we've got a separate layer for each of those. I'm going to go ahead and add a gradient to these. I've got my gradient window here. If you don't see your gradient window, it'll be under here under window gradient and all the other windows that you see here are available under window. Okay. So let's click on the gradient bar. Let's recolor this gradient to kind of a light green and let's do blue. So as you can see, each shape has its own gradient. We've got a blue to green here, blue to green here, but let's do it to the compound path. I'll hit I on my keyboard and just select this blue green gradient. 
and you can see it's applied it across all the shapes. Now you can actually get on your group selection tool and move these around, kind of reposition them, and that gradient will still evenly spread itself across all three. Now text is another good example of a compound path. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and just type hello. I'll get on my selection tool, hold shift and grab a corner. And then we'll change this to Montserrat. Now when it's in live text form like this, which by live text, I mean typable text, we can put our cursor in here and highlight it and change it. When it's like this, it behaves a lot like a compound path. So if I hit I on my keyboard and select this gradient, well, actually nothing happens. We have to get in here in our appearance palette, choose characters, get rid of the fill, and then come up here to type and add a new fill. And now we can hit I on our keyboard and choose this gradient. So it is behaving like a compound path. So we've got blue and then it spreads all the way across our type all the way to green over here. So each letter is not separate in this case. Now let's make a copy of this. I'll hold shift and option and drag it or shift and alt on a PC. And now I'm going to hit shift command O on my keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and paste that same photo in and we'll make it quite a bit bigger and send it to the back with shift command left bracket or shift control left bracket on a PC. Now I can select this live text, hold shift and select this one, and then hit command seven to make a clipping mask. So right now this text is behaving like a compound path. Let's undo that. Now, if I take this text, make a copy down here by holding option or alt, and then come up here to type, create outlines. Let's try to make a clipping mask now. So I'll bring it on top of that same picture. I'll hold shift and I'll hit command seven or control seven. Right now it is not behaving the same way as live text. And that's because we have a group here. It's not a compound path. It's actually a group of compound paths. If I use my group selection tool and click on one, we can see that H is a compound path and we can see that the E is a compound path, for example, but those two are separate compound paths. So to get them to work correctly, we need to make a compound path of the whole group. So to do that, we can do command eight, control eight, hold shift and select this and then command seven and control seven. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Now I wanna show you something you might've come across with a compound path. Now this doesn't happen every time, but sometimes if you click right on the edge with your group selection tool to move this piece and drag it over top of the same piece of the compound path, you get a negative shape like this. And this might cause you some problems, but the way I fix it is to cut this piece with Command X or Control X, and then paste in front with Command F or Control F. And then I'll select the other pieces and come down here to the Pathfinder shape mode and unite. Now you are gonna lose those lines and those separations. So this is a destructive way and you might wanna make a copy first. If you're cutting a piece out of another piece like this, let's put this one up into this one. We'll select both and then we'll come down here to our pathfinder and do uh, minus front. That creates a compound path because basically this is a negative area now. So it sees this as one shape and you can see through the middle. So that's another time you might notice compound path coming into play. Now, if you're making an SVG file for Cricut or Silhouette, compound path will do the same thing. It just puts it all on one layer inside the Cricut software. And the name for that in those programs is welding. So compound paths and welding are the same thing. But if you don't have a die cutting machine, you won't need to worry about it. Okay, if you like the way I teach and are interested in die cutting machines like Cricut and Silhouette, I also have another YouTube channel that goes over tutorials for how to use those. So please check it out. It'll be in the description below. Thank you.